Hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about the N sound in the NG combination, which can cause not only non-native speakers trouble, but as natives as well. This is a very interesting sound and not always common among foreign or non-native learners. So we're going to look at this today and hopefully challenge you. You'll definitely be challenged by the word selection. So if you want to improve your vocabulary, we have a lot of vocabulary. I will be explaining the difficult words and giving examples as we improve our pronunciation. So are you ready? Let's begin. Now, as I'm saying this, I just want you to know that if you have any questions, please ask them in the question button at the bottom of your screen, and I will get to them at the con conclusion of the presentation. I do want to answer your questions, especially those pertaining to pronunciation. And I want to give credit and thank Susan Cameron in her book, Perfecting Your English Pronunciation, where most of this lesson comes from. She's done a really nice job in this book. All right. We're going to look at why this is a problem. And I think we're going to start with the non-native issue. So singing, to sing, is a word that obviously we use quite a bit. It's a common word, but some speakers of English, non-natives, will end up saying sinning. I'm sinning. I'm sinning instead of singing. So let's try it. Sinning, singing. Sinning, singing. Do you hear the difference? Because that is where the problem lies for most of us. Sin, to sin, is to do something that is considered wrong or bad in the eyes of the church. Singing is something you do when, you <laughs> when you're happy or maybe sad or in the shower for a lot of us. So let's try it again. Sinning, singing. And so the problem is that when some people, want, when they want to say singing, end up producing sinning. And so this is a little bit of an issue. Let's move on to the next slide because it's not just a non-native issue. Native speakers also struggle, but in, the, in a sort of a very different sense. Instead of saying singing, so NG is sort of used as a diphthong of sorts, even though it's not a vowel. It's sort of a combination. Um, some natives will say singing as if they're two separate into two separate syllables. Well, they are separate syllables, but like almost separate words. Singing, which is also not correct. So we have problems on both sides with some native speakers and many non-natives. So I think this is a very interesting um, choice of sound. So let's look at where it originates from. And we want to distinguish it from the N. When I say N, my tongue is touching the top of my mouth near my teeth, front teeth. S N. N. That is easy, I think, for most of us. The N sound you produce, do you see the, 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 the depiction here? The N sound comes when your tongue touches the back of your throat or the back of your mouth. And it says here, and I've given the source, they've done a great job of explaining, it's in the same position as the K and G, mainly K, I think. And you have the ng sound, ng, as in thing, ng. Try it, ng, ng. It's almost a nasal sound is what they normally, how it's taught. So let's try thing. Sinking, sinking, try it again, sinking, England, England, okay, obviously I'm going slower and emphasizing the, the sound. You would normally say England, incredible. Incredible. 
We, we have a lot of practice today, so don't worry. I think the most important thing is to relax and try to understand that you, you need the tongue touching the back of your mouth or the back of your throat, sort of, and uh, just to, to, to try to relax the other muscles and produce through the nose a little bit this nasal sound. So look at, this is an interesting sort of diagram here. Strong, strongly, stronger, this is phonetic spelling, and strongest, strongest. All right, now let's go, let's practice some of these words. We have a lot of words, some phrases, and a few sentences. So here we go. All right, ban, bang. So, excuse me, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the normal with the N, the normal N sound, and then we're gonna to go to the N sound on the right side. So I'm gonna read both words as a pair, and then you repeat after me. Ban, bang, ban, bang. If you're banned, you're not allowed to enter somewhere. And a gun goes bang, bang, bang is how we make the sound in English. Hopefully you don't hear that very often in your life, unless you're a hunter. Din, ding. Din, ding. Din is a unpleasant or, a, yeah, unpleasant noise. Often loud, unpleasant noise. That's a din. So if, the, if someone down below is making a lot of unpleasant noise, you can say, what's that din down there? It's a, I like this word, actually. Ding it can mean a lot of things, but if you hit someone's car with your car very slightly, just a small accident, you might ding their door or ding their car. Just hit it slightly and make a little dent. You ding it. If I dinged up my elbow, I hurt it slightly. Ding. Fan, fang. Fan, fang. Fangs are these two molars, these two large, sorry, these two large teeth prominent in the cat family. Cats have fangs. You see them on the lions very prominently. Big front, two front teeth down below for chewing and killing their prey. All right, sin, sing. Sin, sing. Ran, rang. Ran, rang. Yesterday I rang the doorbell. We ring doorbells. If there's a bell at the front door, you ring it. Or yesterday I rang it. Pan, Pang, pan, pang. If I have a pang in my body, it's a sharp pain. It's a sharp, ow, it hurts, it's very sharp. That's called a pang. So if my body pangs after a very hard workout, it's the sharp pains that I'm feeling. We call that a pang. Or we can call it a pang. All right, more of these now with the NK or NK sound. Here we go. Ban, bank. Ban, bank. Clan, clank. Clan, clank. Clank. Listen again. Unk. Unk. Clank. Clank. Now, what clanks? Two pieces of metal that are rubbing together can clank. So often, this is collocated 
or associated with cars. If your car clanks, it's because it's old or wearing out and needs you need a new car or a repair. But a clanker, we can also call this a clunker or a clanker is something like an old beat up car. Maybe clunker, I think is what we say. But a clank is this really unpleasant sound that two metal pieces make when they rub together. Fun, funk. Fun, funk. In, ink. In, ink. Now, ink is that black liquid that you pour into a fountain pen and then you write with it. This is ink, but we can also use this sort of metaphorically. I inked my signature. It, we can use it for the word write. I inked, I wrote, I inked my signature, past tense. I inked, past simple, my signature. We can also use it in that form, but ink is its original meaning is the sort of black liquid that you see in a fountain pen. Ran, rank. Ran, rank. Rank, you often associate rank with the military. You have a higher rank like a general, you have a lower rank like a lieutenant or a sergeant, or someone who's newly enlisted has no rank, perhaps. Sin, sink. Sin, sink. So sink as a noun is what you find in the kitchen when you're washing dishes. You wash dishes in the sink, in the kitchen. But if you use it as a verb, it's when ships or boats or any floating object has too much water in it, it sinks to the bottom of the river or the ocean or the sea, but to the, to, to the bottom. We hope that never happens but it does sometimes. All right, more words, are you ready? These are bigger words now, these are longer words. They're multi-syllabic words. Here we go. Anchor, anchor, anchor. An anchor is what you throw over when you want your boat to stay still. You throw the anchor over and it anchors you. Anger, 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 angle, angle, angle. We have a right angle. This is a geometric term. When we have 90 degrees, we call this a right angle in geometry. Anguish. Anguish. She or he or the student anguished as the deadline approached, the deadline for the homework. It's great mental, sometimes physical, but mainly mental, um, suffering, great mental suffering. They anguished over the essay that was due tomorrow. <laughs> you were, you're getting, to, you become depressed or anguish. It's a great word to use in the appropriate moment. Ankle, ankle, not uncle, ankle. The ankle bone is just above the foot. You can see it, it's on the right or on the outer sides uh, of each foot, it, just above the foot, you have the ankle. Anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. This is nervousness, you're tense, you're not relaxed, you're anxious. This is, the, this is the adjective of anxiety. Anxiety is a noun. Anxious is the adjective. 
banging, banging, banging. Someone is banging at the door. So we should answer it. The, maybe the police were banging on the door. Banging is a loud or hard knock. You can knock or you can bang on a door. Hopefully, you just have knocking. That's polite. If you're banging, it generally signals an emergency. Finger. 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 Function. Function. Function, 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 fungus, fungus. I think fungus is a Greek term, which we know that uh, mushrooms are made of fungus. These griba, in many languages, we might refer to them in that sort of word, but fungus is what mushrooms are made of. We have edible uh, mushrooms. Edible is something you can eat. We have edible mushrooms and non-edible mushrooms, the ones that can kill you or make you sick. So you have to be careful which mushroom you eat, but mushrooms are fungi or fungus. Gangster, gangster. Gangster. Hanging. Hanging. This is a tricky one. The picture is hanging from the wall. Hanging. Hanging. This is difficult. One more time. Hanging. 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 Hunger. Hunger. Junction. Junction. If you arrive to a junction, it's generally a crossing of streets. That's a junction. You can also call it a crossroads. I'm at the junction of this street and that street. That's how we normally collocate it, a junction. All right. We have a lot more words. I hope, you're, I hope this is helpful and interesting because we have a lot of words I've prepared. Let's see if we get through them all. Language, language, so that ng, language, languid. Languid, languid. Languid is when you're a bit lazy, you don't want to use any energy, you feel la you f you're languishing, you don't, you don't want to exert any energy. You feel languid or you are languid. Linger, linger. Linger means to stay a lot longer than normal. So a smell can linger in the air. A person can linger at the party and not go home. They stay for a few hours. They linger but not go home. Lingo. Lingo. Lingo is a special type of language. So in Meditation, you have a special lingo, special words that you use for your profession. In sports, with football, there's another lingo or parlance is another nice word here. Special language, linguist, linguist. This is a person who studies languages or an aspect of language. Longer. Longer, longest, longest, shingle, shingle, 
shingle. Now, shingles are those square tar-like objects on your roof, at least in the U.S., that repel the water off your house onto the ground. You put shingles on your roof, and that repels the water onto the ground. Singer. Singer. Single. Single. Singular. Singular. So if I if I have a if I have one focus, one aim, I have a singular focus. A singular aim, which means I'm very focused. I'm not distracted. I have a singular purpose in life, for example. Springing. 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 Let's try it again. This is, I think this is tricky. Tell me if this is difficult or not. And if you're enjoying this uh, live or video, share it with your friends, please. Springing. Springing. So my tongue and my throat in the back or the, the top of my mouth are touching a lot. Springing. Springing. It's touching. You hear it. Sprinkle. Sprinkle. I'm sprinkling some salt on my salad. This is to sprinkle. You take a pinch of salt, a pinch of salt, and you sprinkle it. That's sprinkling. Stinger. 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 So bees have stingers, that's a noun. Uh, and if I have a stinger on my body, it means I have a sharp pain somewhere, normally near my joints, in my elbow or my knee, mainly my elbow, I might have a stinger, where there's a shoulder, a stinger, a sharp pain, very small, but it's a sharp pain in a very localized area, all right. Let's try these. Are you ready? Are we having fun? Now we're moving to the ends of the words. Along. Along. Along the road. Among. Among. Among friends. Anything. Anything. Bank, bank, belong, belong, blank, blank, a blank sheet of paper. There's nothing on it, just white. It's a blank sheet of paper. Blink. Blink. This is to open and close your eyes quickly. So if something is in near your eyes bothering you, you blink. We normally blink anyway to replenish the fluids on the surface of the eye. Blink. Bring. Bring. Gang. Gang. One more time. Gang. Harang. Harang. I think it's harang. Harang. I think harang. Actually, we can check it. Might have two options. I say harang. If someone harangues you, they are very loud and critical of you. You get a haranguing. Someone's very aggressively critical. It's aggressively critical, I think is what it means. Honk. Honk. In big cities, lots of people honk their car horns. You hear this loud noise on the street. They're honking their horn. We say to honk their horn or to honk. 
hung, hung. I hung the picture on the wall. Ink, ink. Inning, inning. In baseball, there are nine innings. Innings, very difficult one. Inning, one more time. Inning, inning. Instinct, instinct. We possess as humans instinct. King, king. All right, let's move on to the, we're getting near the end because we are now going to look at short phrases and then a few sentences. The English language, the English language. Nothing doing, nothing doing. Singing strongly, singing strongly. Clanging, clanking. Remember this was that loud noise pots and pans in the kitchen or a car, clanging and clanking. One more time, clanging and clanking. Uncle's blanket. Uncle's blanket. A tangle of weeds grew along the embankment. A tangle of weeds grew along the embankment. If something is tangled, it's generally string or weeds. It's not in order and they're all combined. A tangle of weeds grew along the embankment. And embankments are found near rivers or next to rivers to sort of gird or pre to prevent flooding. Where is the tip of your tongue? This is the tip of your tongue. Where is the tip of your tongue for all diphthongs? Where is the tip of your tongue for all diphthongs? A diphthong is when you have two vowels that produce a single syllable. So coin, C-O-I-N, O-I, there are two, I'm sorry, two vowels, O-I produce one sort of sound, oi, oi, well, sort of a sound and a half. We call this a diphthong, when two vowels come together to produce a unique sound. It's a diphthong. We sang along with a long song at the skating rink. We sang along with a long song at the skating rink. One more time. We sang along with a long song at the skating rink. And finally, the young company was on the brink of bankruptcy. The young company was on the brink of bankruptcy. If you're, mm -hmm. if you're on the brink of something, you're on the edge. You're about to go into default. Bankruptcy means you're out of money and you can no longer pay your creditors or your suppliers. And so you declare 
bankruptcy. If you're on the brink of something, you're very close to it. You're on the edge.